Calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. This is the Board of Directors regular school board meeting for Monday, May 20th, 2024. Welcome to all of our visitors, guests, and media. Uh, tonight, as usual, going to start off with the board and administration roll calls. Mr. Felt, here. Mr. Burns, here. Ms. Danielson, here. Ms. Schultz, here. Ms. Getzko, here. Ms. Neaton, here. Mr. O'Neill, here. Mr. Schuler, here. Mr. Hennen, here. Mr. Girton. Here. Ms. O'Connell. Here. Ms. Payton. Here. Ms. Dimler. Here. Mr. Vio. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving right along, there were no public comments uh, for this meeting, so is there a motion to approve the attached agenda and addendum? So moved. Second. Motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Ms. Nathan. Any further discussions on the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Item three, which includes the school board minutes from the special school board meeting on April 22nd, 2024. That's our, our tour of the greenhouse. Uh, the regular school board meeting, which was also on April 22nd, 2024. Uh, the personnel consent agenda and the business consent agenda. Uh, one thing I will say about the uh, personnel consent agenda, there's also the principal's contract, the community ed director's contract, finance officer's contract and the manager contract as well as a district administrative assistant contracts. So a lot, lot of contracts in this particular agenda. Move approval as presented. All second. Motion made by Mr. Burns, seconded by Ms. Getzko. Any further discussion on the agenda? Or the consent agenda, I should say. All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the recognitions, presentations, and showcase. Um, we do have uh, three uh, staff members we'd like to personally recognize here tonight. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Superintendent Schuler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, tonight I get the honor of, of recognizing three outstanding retirees. Uh, one of which is here, so, but I'll introduce and, and recognize all three. Uh, our first uh, recognition goes to Mike Yantis. Mike Yantis is currently a, a custodian. Uh, he had 10 years in the district, and again, uh, if you know Mike, uh, just a hard worker and uh, has stepped into uh, kind of on a second career, if you will, and has done a fabulous job and uh, will be missed, certainly, uh, in his role. Our second individual is our Director of Building and Grounds, Bob Dressel. Uh, Bob had 17 years in the district and serving in, in, in various roles, but most recently is the Director role of, uh, of Buildings and Grounds. And again, um, will certainly be missed. Um, Bob was a, uh, just a, a key figure in a lot of the construction work that happened over the last three to four years. Uh, has been a member of our BAC committee. Um, and again, kind of that go-to person. I think when we were uh, in the midst of construction Construction and construction folks were looking for um, answers. Who did they go to? They went to Bob Dressel, and Bob could be that uh, answer guy, if you will. So, again, uh, we wish Bob the best in his uh, retirement and uh, what's next for him. So, again, uh, thank you to Bob Dressel. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, we'd like to recognize uh, Abigail Abbotts, and Abigail has been a teacher in the district for 29 years, has kind of been the face of the art program in high school and the middle school for all those years. Um, let's have Abby come on up. Um, along with that, um, again, she just noted recently here, just as we were talking, that she was a former city council member and a uh, fill -in mayor fill-in for a period of time. So she said this is a very familiar spot for her, uh, which I think from a teaching standpoint is pretty impressive that she was on the city council uh, along with the planning commission, I understand, um, and has filled various roles and been a key member of our community for a lot of years or raised her parent, her own children in our community and our schools. And uh, again, I uh, want to thank Abby for her, her 29 years of service. Thank you, Abby. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, 
very well done, Mr. Schuler. Thank you. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. Well trained. That was great. So funny story about uh, Mr. Dressel. I've been on the bot for three plus years. Two, you know, every two weeks, I've never met the gentleman in person. He's always really? calls it, never met him. <laughs> every two weeks we have a bot meeting. I've never, oh, never wow. seen his face. <laughs> Talk to him all the time. Never seen him. That's but, just, uh, just hear him from above. Just hear him. Just it's like a voice. You should have brought like a big picture. Yeah. 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 Big head. Yeah. 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 But, but no, you know, honestly, thank you guys for your dedication to the district. I think by my Minnetonka math, uh, 56 years of service between the three of you, um, you know, serving our students and our, you know, and our community. So thank you guys again so much. Um, next up, project lead the way. So we have Mr. Girton and Ms. Young. <laughs> and it evening. looks like a few of the students too. Yeah, yeah good evening, uh, members of the board. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about project lead the way. Uh, the board, the district has been very supportive. This was year one of implementing project lead the way, which is really a STEM program that Mrs. Young and the kids will talk about. Um, we brought in samples of items, and I'm hoping that you guys could just tell your story um, as we kind of go through the presentation and talk about what is behind a lot of this in terms of the learning pieces. So with that, I'm just going to turn things over to you and the kids. All right, so thanks for being good. here. Yeah. Of course. Hi, um, I'm Melinda Young. Um, so I took on the STEM role, um, the teacher of the STEM role this year, um, which replaced our technology classes, which was really fun. Um, so I'm just going to go through and kind of do a general overview of the whole, you know, what we do through the grade levels, and then I have, I'm going to turn it over to these guys and let them talk about a couple of their projects they've done. So STEM, um, just to give you a basic background, if you don't know, is, you know, science, technology, engineering, math. We focus a lot on engineering. Um, the biggest thing is just taking... Um, what they learn in other classes and applying it in a very practical way. So we, it's very project based. It's um, you know we do a lot of real world situations. We bring a lot of um, those types of things and that kind of learning into um, the classroom. We also talk a lot about engineering careers and um, different things that um, students can look at for their future, which is really fun. Um, so like. Um, Mr. Gertman is saying it is Project Lead the Way, which is the curriculum we are using. Um, it's a really cool STEM curriculum. Um, the training for it was amazing over the summer. It was very well done. It's through the, um, throughout the country, so I was working with teachers from all over, um, and which really made the experience um, really well-rounded. Um, but it's a module that's developed by educators, and so that's what makes it even better. They bring in teachers who write this curriculum themselves and make these projects really, really interesting. So right now, the course is offered. We've got um, Energy and Environment. That's for our fifth graders. So um, if you look up here, this the windmill, the wind turbine, is one of the projects that the kids get to work on. Um, and that really focuses on um, looking at sustainable resources, reusable energy, and how to um, create different alternate, alternate solutions for consumption and recycling and things like that. Um, in sixth grade, we have flight and space. Um, so that really, we do a whole unit on you know, how airplanes basically get in the air how the science behind that works. They make you know, different types of um, paper airplanes. They test them. We look at thrust and all of that um, drag, all of those fun things. And then we go into space and we learn about rockets. And they eventually get to build their own bottle rocket, which we launch outside on the football field. <laughs> it's really fun. And then this year, our seventh and eighth graders are both taking um, design and modeling. And that's what these guys are going to talk about in a minute. Um, so that is where you really take the design process and apply it um, through sketching, solid modeling, CAD design, things like that. Um, and then next year, I get to get trained on this this summer, um, our eighth graders will eventually take an automation and robotics class. So that's kind of what's coming forward. Um, and then uh, the last thing before I turn it over to these guys, 
Um, I, at the end of every quarter, which the class is a quarter-long class, I survey the students and just ask them some different questions about it. Um, and one of the questions was, what is one concept you learned in this class that you can apply in other classes or in your daily life? And these are some direct quotes from the kids that they, um, that I just pulled out of the survey, which is really fun. You can see they really see the application behind it and things like that. So I'll let you guys read that. I don't need to read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. We, um, so I'll have um, Martin go first. So this is Martin Lobestall. He's a seventh grader at our school. And why don't you just talk about the photorthosis kind of process that we did with that. So the photorthosis is a project where you build like a boot for someone that has um, cerebral palsy. And you get to pretty much design it however you want. And then it has to be able to they can't move their foot down, they can move it up, and huh. yeah. yeah. Has to be removable, things like that. So they, this is the, one of the first projects, this is the first project yeah. they do, so we started like day two. Um, and they get to go through the whole design process of sketching it, designing it, planning, and then eventually building it. They have all sorts of design requirements, like Merton mentioned, it can't go down, it does have to go up, has to be removable, and they do a little runway walk. Do you remember who your runway walk person was? Uh, Shelby. Shelby. So I make them put it on. They have to <laughs> nice. walk around <laughs> and everything. So, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Good job. Thanks, John. All right. And then, Mr. Schuler, if you could yeah. um, click on that. I'm going to have um, Abigail Lohman and uh, Lucy Brantz talk about their puzzle cube. Okay. So, this is our puzzle cube. So pretty much just a cool little, like you know, little thing made out of box. Um, <laughs> our problem was, um, like our cube is made out of 27 individual pieces. We have six, six like one of these pieces or whatever, um, and then it will create the hold up, three by three cube. And yeah, we thought it would take three or four minutes. You know, depending yeah. on, but. So in this project, we had to like make predictions on what we would think would happen in the future with the cube. So first we had to like make a challenging cube to solve, it, to solve. So we had to like individually make the pieces with those blocks that you can like take apart and put together to like model our ideas and then, or linking cubes, yeah, thank you. And then we eventually put it into wood blocks and glued them together. So like our first one was like all the layers or whatever to make this. So we just kind of took a picture, kind of drew it out there this way, and so you know kind of just put it all together, and then and then we had to make uh, isometric drawings. So first we took apart each individual piece, like this piece for example. I don't think it's on there. It might be on the next slide. But so we had to take this and then we had to draw it in like a 3D model, which is in the uh, top right corner, and then we had to draw it from the top, the front, and the right. So like all the different views of it. Yeah, there's the green ones in the top one. And then we had to do uh, Tinkercad as like a 3D modeling program online. So we had to make a model of all our pieces and then put them together to see like what it would look like in a 3D space. Okay, and then we took a picture. We made our wood model and we took a picture of it. So we had to glue each piece together, each little block or whatever together, and then we took, um, we took just some paint and we painted it on so that it could be colorful and not boring. <laughs> <laughs> and another part of this, it doesn't show in the slideshow, but each of the wooden blocks, obviously, they're not going to be precise, so we had to work on like finding solutions like, oh, if this piece doesn't fit in, like, what oh. do we do to like, help fix it? So yeah, we used like, a lot of sanding and stuff. So then once we actually got it together, we had everybody come down or whatever and um, mark their times or whatever to see how long it took. And you know, a couple kids took like 10 minutes and some kids took, like don't Allie, she took. It took over five minutes. <laughs> 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 Allie took, you know, two, like not even two minutes, so. So yeah, this really helped to work, our, let's work on like gathering data and stuff. So then we also made a box and poster plot mm -hmm. to show our quartiles and stuff for our data. 
so yeah, that's basically it. Oh, also another part of the project was making this presentation and like yeah. giving. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. They didn't good. make this just for you. Yeah, actually everyone, everyone, everyone. Yeah. 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 Were the parameters to have it be difficult, like the difficulty level be within a certain time frame? Or were you just trying to make it as difficult of a puzzle as you could? Difficult as it would? Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah, it didn't really matter. Yeah, and they just hand them to the kids, on obviously undone all the pieces apart, and then they just time them while they try them together. And they have to have at least four adults try theirs, and ten people in total. So, so yeah, we had, had a bunch of teachers do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah, this is um, excellent. If you guys want to come up, I just grabbed some other projects that the kids have done this year. Um, the Fort Worth Roses, there's a skimmer, there's a, we print um, marble mazes that they create. So if you guys want to come up and look at them, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, that's all we got. Why don't we take a minute or two if we guys yeah. want to do yeah. it? Yeah. Unhook. Linda, well, while they're, while they're looking, yeah. looking forward to next year in the robotics program, what are some things that you foresee happening with that program and well, that next I'm, level? Yeah, so I'm really excited because I think um, with the CAD designing and things like that, it's going to bring in that coding piece mm -hmm. um, and then that really hands-on putting together the robots. I'm also hoping that it helps up our actual robotics program right. Transfer. in the high school, which would be yep. really good. It's kind of a good way to do it. <laughs> Yeah, so they put washers, they have to put washers in, and then they calculate speed based on the distance and the weight and the time and all of that. Martin, were you given the limited materials that you could use for that? Yeah, or was there any material you wanted to use? There's like, there's a bunch of materials, and you could just use as much. As much as you want, okay. So whatever was available to you in class, you didn't have to bring anything from home. Is it just pressure then for the lockets? Yeah, so it, you fill it up with water. I have a launcher that um, you connect it. They <coughs> pump out with a the bike pump and then pull the string and off it goes. It goes pretty high. Yeah. So it's for like fifth graders, what, what was their project? Um, the windmill was the there. Yeah. Right. So sixth graders are sixth graders are the rockets. Yeah. I know. <laughs> 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 I know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't hear anything. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So after doing this, who's interested in going into engineering? I already had the issues. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I should say, besides Lucy, it's already known. Yeah. <laughs> That's your thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there a specific type of engineer? Um, yeah. Okay. Good for you. And how many years have we had the, the lead the way? This is the oldest. This is the first year. The first year. Yeah. Before okay. that, um, I did teach a, a, like a STEM course to just seventh graders as part of their exploratory program. Um, and so that's why these guys, they got to do the ball rockets because that was something we did previously um, in their so And then so right now, eighth graders aren't doing, from our eighth from Project Lead the Way, that's they're doing, next year. Yeah, they're, okay. well, they're doing the Project Lead the Way, the seventh and eighth graders are doing the oh, same okay. program okay. at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, couldn't, I couldn't fit that much training in. What's <laughs> 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 not? Are you a little bummed you're missing out on your revival? Aww. Martin gets it next yeah. year. Yeah. You excited for it? Yeah. It'll be fine. Go for the robotics team. That's my hope. I'm hoping that we can get some more interest in the robotics team and some more girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're starting to have now a K through 12 kind of all the way through. We're hoping there's a curriculum writing this summer for the alignment of our K through 12. So <laughs> Innovation Lab in the, in the elementary, which is the K through 4. Um, 
not tied to this in, in any way, but they do have an elementary curriculum for Project mm -hmm. Lead the Way, but, um, and then of course Project Lead the Way in the High School of Robotics and their CTE um, work that we do is kind of a nice alignment all the way through. Now they have some type of STEM uh, curriculum all the way through, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. Good stuff, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Nice job. real quick want to thank you guys again um, and just a, a word for mrs. young she has put in well over probably a hundred hours of training mm -hmm. to be certified through project lead the way and then she'll attend actually training in California this summer another 40 plus hours down there so it just it takes a special person to facilitate this this is not a traditional teaching role and she has really stepped up so thank you appreciate that Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, just the rest of us. Um, <laughs> action items. Uh, first one, item A, the proposal of change of start and end times for the elementary, middle, and high schools for the 24-25 school year. Superintendent Schuler. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is something we've been talking about for almost a year now, and I guess at the end of last school year, we started the process of just looking at reviewing our, our busing model and our pickup and drop off times. <clears throat> it really came out of the, the idea, though, of the second tier of busing that comes to the high school, middle school every day. And just the long wait times uh, those students had in, in, in transitioning to their buses, um, a lot of times it was 20, you know, 20 25 minutes um, of time uh, waiting uh, to get on their bus. And again, um, we just thought if there was a way to provide a better um, solution for our students and a safer solution after school, and supervisory too, that's another issue. It's, it's hard to supervise. Uh, I give our teachers a lot of credit in high school and in the middle school that are, are supervising or admin as well but it's just it is it's a lot of time when when kids leave the school building they think the day is over you know I'm done I don't need to listen so super supervising that's been a, a tricky component as well and I, I think the frustration over that time period led us to talk to, to Brian Cook, um, our transportation provider at Cook Busing, just to say what other options do we have. So we started that conversation uh, last fall um, and we've met multiple times since then just trying to refine this. So I've asked Brian to come today and, and tonight and just give us a little overview of kind of what the model is that he's proposing um, to lessen the impact um, that we'll have on, on transportation. So Brian, if you're willing, and Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you. Um, I don't have a whole lot, and I'm hoping to explain this uh, pr pretty clear, but if I don't, <laughs> just ask questions. So um, we put together just a couple of um, visuals, and this is kind of what we do now. So we cover a really large geographical area with um, you know, Winstead, Leicester Prairie, um, obviously Mare, New Germany, um, and then uh, almost up to Delano, uh, over to St. Bonnie, um, and, and kind of all the, all the parts in between. So in the, in the past, what we've done in the, in the morning is when we pick up in those outlying areas, as the buses come into town, um, like the buses from the west will, will drop off at the middle school, high school first, and then they'll pick up other elementary school kids as they go through town um, and get to the elementary school and, and at the elementary school. Um, same thing is true with the other buses coming in from like St. Bonnie, um, some from Mayer. Um, there's one out by um, the Oxyoke Inn. Um, as they come in, they drop off at the elementary school and then pick up kids as they go through town and then end at the high school. Um, and like Darren was saying, a lot of what that causes is when we come by the high school in the morning, it's you know 7.30, 7.35. Um, and those kids are, are waiting, you know, in the school and, and supervision can be an issue and, and everything. Um, I think it's probably, uh, maybe the administrators will say, but the afternoon is probably even worse because the kids are, they're wound a little tighter in the afternoon. Um, and some of those buses that would start at the elementary school don't get to the high school 
until you know 310, 315. So those kids are waiting for for quite a while. Um, so what our what our proposal was or is 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 we talked about start times and, and end times and just tweaking those a little bit. Um, so now what will happen or what we're proposing is that all of the buses when they come in will go to the elementary school first um, and drop off and then they'll come across town, across Watertown, picking up the, the middle school and high school kids and then ending at the high school. Um, and then the same thing in the afternoon, we'll start everything at the elementary school and then drop off as we come through town to the high school and then when they get to the high school, um, you know, the, most of the buses will be there. Um, already, so the, the that wait time is a little bit is is a little bit less. Actually, it's a lot less. Mm -hmm. um, that's worked in in other districts that that we do. Um, I know the question was asked: um, Is it possible to have um, age appropriate busing where you just have elementary school kids on, you know, one bus and middle school, high school, and with the large geographical area, that's that's yeah. tough, yeah. Um, and it's 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 cost prohibitive for to go district wide um we do already do that with a couple of buses um one runs through the um wildflower neighborhood um that one goes through twice and then there's one that kind of covers um uh the other part of of watertown um uh newton not newton um westminster and kind of the the area up um in town up here um and that one will do Two runs also so we're we're not thinking that any of those are going to change um, the rest of the buses all come in k-12 um, already um, the two buses that we did see um, or that we do see a minor impact on is like um, our bus 70 which comes in from the the north had or does currently drop off at the high school and then it it goes over and picks up elementary school kids on the way to the elementary school um, there's about 10 to 12 <coughs> middle school, high school kids regularly that ride that bus um, that would still be on there when some of those elementary school kids are getting on. Um, our bus 22 that comes in kind of from the Winstead, Howard Lake area, um, that one would be um, similar. So um, those are the two routes that are, that are probably the most impacted. Um, if we really button down on times. Um, there could be some of the kids in the outlying areas that ride for a couple minutes longer um, in the morning um, and or in the afternoon. Um, but in the afternoon, they're not waiting at school for that 20 plus minutes um, for their buses to come. So um, I think it's a, it, I think it's a, it, it's a gonna work um, routing wise. And I think it'll help the buildings for, uh, with their administrators and, and stuff too, so. Any questions for Brian? I know we also listed the current start times <clears throat> and then the proposed start times uh, on the agenda as well. Uh, we did send out a parent communication a couple of weeks ago now uh, just to notify parents of that change and um, we have not received any feedback, maybe a couple of emails I should say, questions. just questions um, you know uh, that we kind of worked through and, and I think got a better understanding. So. I think obviously, as Brian has mentioned, the first couple of weeks is always a little tricky as you start to get, I think you plan for every student, 1,500 students riding the bus on day one. Well, that's always not the case, but you have to plan for that. So after the first two weeks, things kind of, or the first month or so, things start to even out and the times start to align accordingly. And then students will, parents will get their postcard with their times in early August as, as usual, Correct. with some of those updated times. Yep. So. So I think I asked this before, and I know there's some rationale behind it, but I always think that high school kids should start earlier and be done earlier because of early, they're getting out for activities early. It's less, you know, now they're going to lose even more time in the classroom when they leave early for activities and so forth. So what's the reason behind having the younger kids start first versus the high schoolers? I think it's the, the overall length of the day um, and the, the minutes that are, are required, I think, um, with the... Yeah, that's certainly part of it. I think, too, as we discussed administratively um, as a principal group, we just felt that elementary students um, actually do better starting off earlier and the high schoolers we thought giving a little bit more <laughs> sleep might be beneficial and we had some of those conversations. Um, but just the idea of really dropping off at the elementary force that start time to come up a little bit earlier but um, 
That was some other reason in the rationale. And then for siblings, if you're dropping off the younger kids versus the older kids, can they stick around in the bus, I take it, with the older siblings? Yeah. That's kind of the plan for that? Right. And we can work with families if that's a concern. So they can stay on the bus rather than getting dropped off if the bus is passing through town. Um, stay on until the sibling gets out the, at the high school, middle school, and then ride home with them and get off at the same time. So, yep. Yeah. And then, Mr. Cook, kind of selfishly living in Mayer, um, my kids are on the bus for a long time already. Mm -hmm. um, sim similar for Mayer, maybe a little bit longer, is that kind of what the expectation is from I, a bus ride perspective? I don't expect Mayer to really change. Okay. Um, I actually looked at that this afternoon. And I don't expect that to get any longer at all um, okay. because those buses are, are loading in Mayer. And um, other than bus four, everything comes directly to the schools. They'll just go to the elementary school first, first yep, and then come across. So okay. um, I would expect those chant times to not change really at all. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Mr. Cook or Mr. Schiller? Thank you, Brian. Thanks for coming Thank tonight. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your work. So then we will need a motion, and this is for adjusting the start, the start times. and end times for next year. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion um, for the proposal to change of start and end times. I'll second that motion. Motion made by Mr. Felt, seconded by Ms. Schultz. Any further discussion on it? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item B, acknowledgement of donation, contributions, and fundraising, which is resolution 24.21. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I'd like to recognize a number of donors again this month um, and the amounts that they're donating to or um, I'm up for. Legion Post 121, uh, donation to band for $1,000 for new instruments. Again, uh, the Legion Post to BPA for $1,000 for their national uh, trip that they just recently took, came back from. Uh, the Mayor Baseball Club also to BPA for $3,000 for their trip to nationals. Um, Dwayne and Jeannie Breaver, uh, Family Foundation Fund of Central Minnesota. Uh, the Community Foundation, a donation to choir for $400 for purchase of music for the high school uh, choir library. Griffith Properties, mock trial donation for $100, again, for their national expense. Um, Legion Post, once again, for mock trial for $2,000 for their um, trial national expenses. Uh, the Watertown Lions Club to the class of 2024, $500 to offset their senior escape day um, scheduled um, for last week. And then um, Watertown Lions, super mileage um, donation of $1,200 uh, in supplies. Um, and then TRAP team also received a donation from the American Legion Post, uh, $1,000 um, in TRAP team equipment. So very nice donations. One thing I would add to, and I've been able to see a few of these um, Groups come to groups like the Lions. Um, last week, uh, the Super Mileage Club came, and uh, also the um, Mock Trial Group came and presented to the Lions and did a fabulous job. It really puts our students in a really neat opportunity to share back with the groups that are, are donating and seeing the benefit in those dollars and how it's being used. And I think community members who can see these students, amazing students doing amazing things, like the Super Mileage Club, was just at that point uh, planning to go up to the Brainerd trip to do their, their annual trip. Uh, Mock Trial obviously came back and shared about their uh, national trip. And um, Kate Drahos, uh, you know, placed amazingly high. Um, but it was great to see, you know, those kids in action and, and sharing back on their, their... So, again, it's not always just asking for money. They're going back and explaining their um, what that money goes towards. So, pretty neat. I make a motion to approve the donations, contributions, and fundraising. A second. Mr. O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah. Have a motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. O'Neill. Any further discussion on the donations, contributions, and fundraising? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. 
Item C, the first and only read of district policies requiring annual review. Superintendent Schuler. Yes, Mr. Chair, we had the 500 series in the month of, of May. Um, I want to thank the policy committee. They met on April 30th to walk through um, these policies. And again, thank you, Mrs. Hewen, for some heavy lifting there. Um, nothing of significance. Um, we did have a, a couple that we worked through with the policy committee uh, before we came to the meeting tonight. Um, you've got some just legal references obviously changed, um, but nothing real significant. Um, the one item we did some additional work on was policy 529, which is staff notification of violent behavior by students and um, uh, the administrative team does this currently but we do it with a, a, a verbal conference uh, conversation with the staff member um, if there ever was a case again we don't have a lot of these obviously that come up but I think the admin staff felt very confident that a, a, obviously a verbal con conversation with the individual teacher if that was the case um, certainly suffices rather than a, a written form or written, written document um, so that was the one of significance but uh, again thank you to the policy committee for and the admin team for for working through that one but otherwise I, we're, we're recommending a first and only read. I'll make a motion to approve the first and only read of the 500 series. I'll second. <clears throat> motion made by Ms. Nathan, seconded by Ms. Getzko. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Item D, resolution 2422. <coughs> uh, Mr. Schuler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, resolution 2422 um, is an unrequested leave of absence uh, resolution in which, if you recall, last month when we made our reductions, um, we had one teacher who was a tenured teacher um, at that time, Mr. Klein. Uh, we eliminated the, the one FTE in Phi Ed. Um, since he was a tenured teacher, the district can place him on unrequested leave. Uh, which essentially means he has right to come rights to come back to a position if that position is in his said field uh, within a five-year period of time. So the district uh, can notify him if there is an opening in that area and he has a certain time of frame, a time of window in which to notify us if he has an interest in that position. So it's a five-year piece of, of time. Um, that you know will obviously account for, um, but um, I know uh, Mr. Klein was was well received, well respected. Um, certainly, with the district would be open to inviting him back if if a said position came open, if he was he was, was willing. So, this just gives him um, any tenured teacher that additional right, if you will, to still have um, an opening. And, and the district had till July one to make this decision. Um, in meeting with Mr. Klein, we felt this was a um, something that the district could support and uh, so we're moving forward with that recommendation. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Burns, seconded by Ms. Danielson. Any further discussion on the resolution? Chair Phil. Yes, yes. Um, because of the nature of the resolution, I do ask for a roll call vote, please. Oh, okay. Well. So you're going to call out the names then? Yes. All right, well. We have a motion and a second, so now it's on, the, on you for the roll call. Sorry. Hunter Feltz? Aye. Jim Burns? Aye. Katie Jo Danielson? Aye. Erica Schultz? Aye. Heidi Getzko? Aye. Lisa Nathan? Aye. Jeff O'Neill? Aye. Thanks. And it was seven to zero, yes, so motion resolution passes. Um, item E, the 24-25 parent student handbooks. Uh, looks like we're starting off with uh, the community education handbooks. Mr. Schuler. Yes, Mr. Chairman Board, uh, we are in handbook approval season. Uh, it is now uh, May. <laughs> Typically, we would bring to you the um, child care and early childhood handbook um, and the elementary handbook. Um, but right now, we are in a kind of a redesign, if you will, of our elementary, high school, and middle school handbooks, um, all in alignment. Uh, and Ms. Hewen and the admin assistants and the principals have been working to pull that together. So we're going to pause on the elementary and bring that back along with the middle school and high school next month. Um, so you'll get three. But um, Ms. Dimler is timely as always, and she is ready to present <laughs> her child care handbook and any changes. All right. So my fa favorite topic ever um, is our handbooks. Um, 
And our child care handbook is quite lengthy, and the reason is because it is what we use for accreditation and um, li licensing. That's what they, they use to review. So just lots of content. I am There's no way I'm going to go through all the changes that we added. I would put everybody to sleep. <laughs> um, so I just did, or I noted everything that we changed. Um, in addition, we went through and made sure that all of our fonts and uh, colors were updated um, and just really exciting stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> kept me, uh, me awake. Um, any questions? Uh, would you like me to go through all the exciting no. changes no. to no, licensing? You <laughs> well, if, if you, you know, maybe if there's a couple, like, big items. Is there any big items that were changed, either whether it's for... Um, the child care or the ECFE? You know, like, I mean, we're talking about, like, the cribs, that we had um, some very specific nuances to okay. the, things like that. So, no, there wasn't anything really exciting. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I could say that there was some room, really just, exciting yeah. stuff. Giving you the yeah. floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, the bibs, you know, we had to change that. <laughs> um, we did, however, in our early childhood one, um, align that closer to our child care one um, where we added more of our health and safety medication emergency um, documentation into that so it is aligned with our child care just to uh, to broaden that um, and to provide more information um, to families um, just because our programs are so similar that is what we added um, and changed and edited for this year, or for next year, excuse me. So. I'll make a motion to approve the 24-25 <coughs> parent student handbooks for the community education group. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Felt, second by Ms. Getzko. Any further discussion on the handbooks? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank Motion you. carries. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now you get to help everyone else with theirs, right? <laughs> now that she's the expert. Exactly. Item F, Southwest Metro Long-Term Facility Maintenance Resolution, 2423. So again, um, this year, this is an annual piece where um, the district um, approves a resolution, the uh, LTFM levy that uh, were assigned by Southwest Metro. So the 11 member districts all contribute to that based on the proportion of usage. So if you can see the diagram, we're about a 2.62% usage on their overall LTFM budget. So um, again, um, all the districts are going through this process. It has to be done by June 30th um, by statute um, for any participating district, any intermediate district. Um, so uh, we're asking for the first resolution for the LTFM um, allocation that we're providing to the Southwest Metro. And then then. Approval. Second. Motion made by Mr. Burns, seconded by Ms. Schultz. Any further discussion on the uh, Southwest Metro LTFM resolution. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Item G, the safe schools resolution. Assuming it's about the same thing, Mr. Schuler. Ditto, exactly, Mr. Uh, Chair. The safe schools levy, uh, you can see the dollar amount there that we're um, allocating to Southwest Metro. Um, Again, they can't levy, so they can't do their LTFM. They can't levy um, for safe schools. So again, it's relied upon from the 11 member districts. So moved. I'll second. Motion made by Ms. Nathan, seconded by Ms. Danielson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Item H, social studies curriculum approval. Mr. Vio and Mr. Schuler. Yes, um, Mr. Vio has been working um, 
hard with the Social Studies Committee uh, in the high school and, and uh, tonight he'd like to present kind of his findings. I should also add the, um, the Curriculum Advisory Committee has also been working hard uh, to come to a conclusion on a uh, Social Studies Committee he'd like to, to move forward with. And I think Mr. View will also explain kind of the process that happens, how we get to a, uh, a final piece to present to the board for approval. So I'll let him, I don't want to steal his thunder. Go ahead, Mr. View. Well, good evening and thank you. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Social Studies start, Committee started to meet last fall and started to kind of dissect and look at the uh, new proposed Social Studies standards and we uh, literally cut them apart and aligned them into quarters so that uh, of where we're uh, currently touching on the standards and then we kind of had any standards that were left over. That's kind of how we started to look for our uh, curriculum in order to fill some of those holes. Um, and so that's how we started that last fall. Uh, I think sometime around December we invited about three different vendors in uh, and to have them show us their wares and uh, kind of look at and question where we, uh, how we can fill those, those gaps. Uh, we did a little bit more review. We got access to some of the online curriculum. Uh, the teachers were able to then look around and play with it. And we started to narrow down um, our our decisions, uh, and I think during our DAC meeting in February, we started to talk about a little, get, getting a little bit closer to uh, what those decisions uh, were looking like and what those recommendations were. Uh, and then by the time we got to our April meeting, we had uh, pretty close to a definitive uh, recommendation for that group. Uh, we were looking at uh, in grade six Northern Lights, which is no change. That's the curriculum that's been there for quite some time because it's basically a Minnesota history course. And that is uh, one of the only providers that gives any specific information on Minnesota history. Um, grade seven, uh, US history, world history in grade 10, uh, government, uh, civics. Civics is now moving to grade 11 or 12 for our students. Uh, we recommend uh, McGraw-Hill <coughs> for uh, that. Uh, grade 8 is going to continue with their TCI, which is basically an online curriculum uh, that Mr. Janakula likes uh, for geography, world geography. Um, and then our uh, high school geography, um, the McGraw-Hill, and I know uh, Mr. Felt asked about you know, bundling these together to see if we could get a better deal. Uh, I, I did try that approach. I didn't, with very limited success, but we tried. Uh, but also uh, geography, uh, the McGraw-Hill is much more of a, um, a physical geography and the grad or the standards are much more on a human geography basis now. So that's kind of what uh, the reasons for and the rationale for going uh, with uh, Pearson, which is a Savas product. Uh, and then finally our CIS, which is Norton, uh, that's required and pretty much mandated to us by our CIS uh, providers. So uh, those were the recommendations. Uh, once we got to that point and we kind of shared that with our DAC committee at our April meeting, um, I tried to give access uh, to that committee and that was had limited success also. So it took us another about another week to get some more, uh, gain some more access and that committee did a, a very nice job, a thorough job of uh, asking and vetting questions to myself and then ultimately providing uh, a good recommendation that the board continue to carry through with these. Uh, I would also say too, we had economics on the list for McGraw-Hill. But due to budgetary constraints, um, we kind of excised that one. Uh, Mr. Urban just, you know, thought that he had enough resources in his back pocket that he could uh, continue to meet the standards with what he has. And um, in order to meet our budgetary constraints, he uh, was satisfied. You know, he was satisfied to be able to do that. So, uh, and that's kind of where we landed with our social studies um, so curriculum. With the updated standards when are they coming into effect they will start i believe next year okay so in we'll 25 the, we'll 26 have the products in line we'll have the products in line uh, i would probably emphasize you know uh, we haven't had a a review like this for social studies for quite some time so i'm <laughs> i'm going to guess and i think one of our social studies uh, teachers indicated that i can't see assigning 800 pages of reading in 18 <laughs> weeks so it's going to continue to be a resource rather than a turn the page kind of a cu curriculum uh, and, and you know they have they've been around a while and they've got a wealth of resources so this will continue to be supplemental uh, in a lot of regards yep 
Perfect. I'd just like to note that our DAC, DAC committee is made up of members from the school board, um, from the teachers themselves, um, from parents in the district, and other community members that aren't share. I mean, yeah. aren't shareholders don't have students in the in the district. But um, so we did get concerned citizens. Yes, we did get access <laughs> to all of the material, and um, I mean, it That's seemed. Good. Yeah. In Sounds line. like it's a very thorough, Good. Be thorough good. process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Yeah. Vio, uh, what's your recommendation on how often mm -hmm. curriculum should be reviewed and so forth? Is it as standards change? Is it? I mean, obviously, as mm -hmm. you stated, it was. It's been a long time. Um, yeah, and I kind of recommendation prior to I think prior to when Allison was here, I don't think that there was a curriculum review cycle. So I don't know that, uh, which is part of the reason it had gone on so long when. Uh, if my understanding is correct, when she came on, she kind of requested and got a cycle on board. Currently, the state standards are reviewed every 10 years on a 10-year cycle. So math, language arts, physic, uh, science, um, uh, FIED, the arts, social studies. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so they're on a 10-year cycle at the state level. And I like to lag behind them just a little bit sure. because they have a year or two for implementation from the time they are adopted until the time that they're expected to be implemented. But that's kind of my guide is to help me go through that process. Uh, the, the vendors, they're more along the six to eight year, but I don't know if why that maybe it's because bigger Sales. states are on a yeah. on a Sales. yeah exactly. or, or or bigger states are on an eight year cycle because a lot of these are going to the Californias and Texases of the world because um, there's lots of big that's where the a lot of the money is too so um, but I'm trying to stick to that based on where our standards and implementation timelines are thank you I feel like a lot of the curriculum was I mean like you said stuff that's already familiar to the students to the teachers yep. and it's not a huge change, okay. um, I would say. So, really, yep. and there's no change in social studies staff. So, you know, they're right. gonna right. continue to work in that regard too. Just on timing, like civics is moving. Yeah, back. yeah. Like correct. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. And and, and a lot of emphasis. This, so. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of emphasis on the human geography component instead of physical geography. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you for the. The deep dive, and like I said, it sounds like your process is good. Mm -hmm. like it's a great, process. it's a great committee. We have a really bright, uh, engaged member, committee. Engaged it's yes. been, yeah. yeah, compared to some previous committees that I've had, you know, yeah. trying not to fall asleep was your number one priority. But this one is quite a bit different. So yeah. there's a lot of questions <laughs> asked. A lot I like of, that. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big deal. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. I, I make a motion to approve the social studies curriculum. I'll second. Motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Ms. Getzko. Any further discussion on the <laughs> social studies approval? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. And thank you for the DAC committee to mm -hmm. spending the time to review all the curriculum. That's probably bad in policy. The yeah. most reading. Yes. <laughs> All right. That concludes the action items of the evening. Uh, moving on to the review and information items. Uh, first up is the construction updates. Mr. Schuler. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we gave ICS the, the night off tonight because there's not a ton to report, but uh, I think next month they'll have plenty to come back with with the construction projects, the parking lot projects. Uh, fully underway. Just a couple of quick updates uh, that I can share and certainly Bach members as well, but um, parking lot um, project really officially kicked off on Thursday. There was tree removal at the CLC, um, the district office and high school and actually elementary too. So they hit uh, all, all the buildings um, on two days and a lot of that work is now complete. Um, the, what you see now is probably going to stay till they get to the next phase, which would be obviously starting to do the earthwork and then the tree stumps and such will, will start to 
go away. So that'll be it'll look like that for a, a few weeks. Um, we do see a little bit of a lag time at the CLC, and, and uh, Mr. Heimitz reported today that we're still working with the Carver County Watershed to get final approval uh, on the uh, CLC uh, retention pond um, topic we've talked about last meeting. Um, certainly frustrating um, for, for all of us, um, but we're seeing probably about a two-week lag there. Um, they did move ahead today. They're confident enough to move ahead and uh, ask the contractor to start purchasing um, uh, everything needed for the project. So we've been delaying that just because we didn't know if anything would come up through that um, from the watershed group. So we're confident now what uh, we have uh, on order is ready to be finally submitted. So that process started today. Um, <clears throat> Also, um, otherwise we should be on, on track of the high school, middle school, and the district office lots. Uh, that should be just moving along nicely once school gets out. Flooring at the middle school, uh, I know our, our group met with um, some reps on the flooring again and just trying to get to a, a resolution on what that's going to look like um, and some, some moisture mitigation products that we're using there. Um, and we have an agreement and now it's just a matter of getting down to the what Date are we going in to remove the underlayment and then starting up from scratch again essentially? So um, that process has been ongoing as you know, um, but we're just again narrowing down the timeline when the contractor can come in and, and uh, start the work. So, one thing I would add that might be important for some people is mm -hmm. the demo part of that where they're prepping the floor, they use a shot blasting machine, which is rather loud. So. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want to be in the middle school during that process. It's what they say, two to three weeks of demo. Two to three weeks, right? Yep. So. Yeah. Again, we're trying to keep everybody informed in terms of uh, those parking lot closures and changes. So uh, that'll be an ongoing daily update uh, for folks uh, coming onto campus. And we sent a communication earlier uh, last week, just again, when the first round of construction happened. Um, people just need to be aware and be patient. And like I said, we'll try to get the communication out via community ed, um, certainly the camps and things this summer. Heather will be putting things out on social media or through email, but um, just kind of ask for patience because it's gonna be a weather depending some days, it could be depending on equipment to what have you, but um, um, yeah, just be patient. That's all I have. I don't know if anybody else had anything from Bach, but lots to report next month, I'm sure. Yeah. Kind of quiet. <laughs> Which is those what? two big updates. <laughs> Better knock on wood. I I know, right? there, Mr. Phelps. It's been a long time getting to this point. Too, so. <laughs> all right. Any other questions on the construction? All right. Uh, strategic plan update. Mr. Schuler. Yes, Mr. Chair and Board, we are um, now um, into the surveying part of our strategic plan for really our second year of the survey. Um, last year, if you recall, we used the spring survey data to kind of jumpstart our vision card and just taking a look at how we're doing. Um, this will be the second year, obviously, that we're surveying, and so those surveys went out the week of May 8th. Um, so uh, staff and parents, um, you have that survey information in hand and students also will be surveyed. Uh, I think a lot of that's happening this week as um, we start to wrap up the school year. So we're some getting good feedback there. Early numbers, I, I looked this morning, we had about 275 parents um, already have submitted um, and about 75 staff members um, have also um, done their survey. So we'll do some reminding uh, of them. <laughs> and one more time, Heather and I have talked about just another round of reminders to, to get in and complete the survey. Because again, we really do appreciate the feedback. Uh, it does kind of drive our strategic plan and how we're doing and a lot of areas. So um, uh, it's, it's very useful. And again, we did keep pretty much the same uh, format that we used last year, just for consistency purposes. We, you know, we wanted to use last year's data obviously as the baseline and then this year's data as um, you know, where we're at. So we did talk about the idea of you know, revising that next year potentially given um, kind of where we're at in our strategic plan. But um, we're excited to see the feedback and, and um, I should be able to share that probably in June um, uh, with the board. So. Not 
I'd appreciate seeing the, the results of the survey. Absolutely. Anything else for Mr. Schuler? And how it compares to the like the first round. How well, it compares to the first and how it ties mm -hmm. back with our mm -hmm. um, yep. roadmap. Mm -hmm. All right. Hearing no questions, we'll start out the admin reports with uh, Mr. Hennon. Joe said I'm on the clock because he was up here for like 15 minutes, so I'll be as brief as I can. <laughs> um, uh, Hiring-wise, we have an art opening that we do have uh, interested candidates, so that looks promising, so I'm hoping to be filled with that soon. Um, end of the year highlights. Um, you know, obviously this is a busy time, but it's it's a fun time to recognize a lot of our kids, especially our seniors. You know, we had our practice on Friday. The elementary walkthrough is always a really cool experience. Like I think our I think our seniors actually enjoy that almost more than the younger kids. Uh, but it's always a cool event. Um, we had the awards and scholarship nights a few weeks back. Uh, again, it's a cool night to I think over 80 students are recognized with either some award or scholarship that night. Um, just publicly want to thank the Education Foundation. You know, through their community scholarships and then the other, you know, more traditional scholarships we've had for years, we had over seventy thousand dollars given away that night in scholarships to our students. Um, Sixty-three kids applied. One of the things from the Education Foundation is they really do want every kid to get at least something, and every kid did get at least one scholarship that night. So again, it was it's a cool night to recognize our seniors. We have a great group of kids who've accomplished a lot. So again, just a, a fun night. And then lastly, you know, probably the thing I've been asked about 80 times a day is graduation <laughs> Friday night. Will it be outside? And what I will tell you is unless, you know, it is raining, we are going to be outside. The kids, the, the, I shouldn't say all, but it was a pretty vocal group of students <laughs> in the last week that they really, really want to be outside. If we can, um, one of them even said today, they said, tell every parent to bring an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, you tell them that, but so, um, you know, the plan is to be outside. We're going to make a decision Thursday or Friday. Um, you know, it takes us about an hour to an hour and a half to set up. So we do have some time if we wait. Um, we have 109 seniors that are that decide to walk. We had a few that decided they just weren't going to participate that night, which is their choice. Um, just a reminder, if we're outside, we're going to meet in the district office at 630. Um, if we are going to be inside, we'll probably change that to the high school office to meet um, and a reminder as well for outside no high heels because that will could perforate the um, turf other than that communication will be going out Heather's helped me put a map together for parking purposes that will be sent out and again we'll send out something to parents tomorrow just to remind them of the timeline and again the time like I explained to some people really doesn't matter whether we make a decision today or Friday it's either in the gym or outside you're gonna park the same spot no matter what so but so that will be coming and again pray for good weather it depends on the site you go to some say 70%, some say 20%, and if it's dry at 7 o'clock, we plan to be outside. It's the plan. Awesome. Any questions? Love it. All right, thank you. Thank See you, you Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gurton. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the clock now, too? I'm afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got this. Um, so mostly just recognizing uh, staff and students, um, parents that just have been part of just a great year at our school. I want to start with our PTO. Um, we have just an incredible PTO. Just you guys went above and beyond for Teacher Appreciation Week every day. Um, food, just constant, nonstop, really good food. Um, but just the morale and just, you're just so great. We're just so grateful. Um, Jessica Borsma is stepping down as our president. I just want to really recognize her. She's been just for many, many years um, leading the middle school PTO, um, but she's handing off the torch, but just thank you to her. It's been awesome. Um, they also just threw our eighth grade celebration last week. Um, this is, again, just a wonderful time. All our eighth graders come out. Um, we take over the stadium and um, have a party out there, uh, music, food, and then all kinds of um, gift cards that were, were handed out um, through generous donations collected by PTO. So just great things. Um, we hosted our first track and field school-wide since 2018. That was awesome. Uh, Mr. Jetma, Ms. Corvey, and Mr. McDonald put that together for us, and that was just an all-school fun day. I was able to be a coach and hang out with about 15 students. They stacked my group, my team, uh, but we still had a great time. 
Um, student Council, I uh, just want to mention their leadership. Um, we have just a phenomenal group of leaders in eighth grade, all the way down in the fifth grade. Um, Caitlin Wires is the council coordinator. She stepped down for maternity leave, and then Gail Singsang has been running it uh, since she stepped back, and just phenomenal. Um, they're actually uh, heading out to feed my starving children tomorrow on a field trip and then grabbing lunch, but again, just incredible leadership. A um, couple of last last items here to talk about. Um, our web mentors are going to visit with their fifth graders and spend one more day hanging out with them uh, this week. And then last but not least, we're going to have a an incredible end of the year Royal Assembly on the stadium, thanks to Mr. Szymanski. Uh, we're going to be out there with our middle schoolers and test the sound system <laughs> and just celebrate uh, all the great things that have been going on. So that's it. Just a lot of positive announcements and recognition. So any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Ms. O'Connell. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm just going to start by touching on um, the learner outcome of all students exhibiting physical, social, and emotional well-being and feeling connected to school. So our preliminary MCA and FastBridge data indicates that we are succeeding in our quest to flip the triangle and have more students at or beyond grade level targets than not. We've also seen tremendous growth, especially in the area of literacy, in the primary grades especially. These results, which I'll share in just a moment, are due to the hard work of the teachers in learning and adjusting their teaching practices practices in accordance with the science of reading, a revision and restructuring of our Tier 2 and Tier 3 intervention prog program, and implementation of a new core resource in phonics called UFLY, which you saw the kids read at I Love to Read Month. Yeah. Um, over the coming months, I'll highlight some of the other things, but tonight, kindergarten and first grade. So in the spring of last year, 47% of our kindergartners were in the low to no risk category. This year, we have 86% in that same category. Last spring, we had 57% of students in first grade in the low risk or no risk category. This year, we have 85%. Wow. So that's huge growth in that area of reading. Um, additionally, we've also seen tremendous growth and a decrease in incidents on the playground due to the implementation of PlayWorks and the aid of 78 fourth grade junior coaches, which is almost you know, 75% of our fourth grade class. Um, so we've had a decrease of 110 office visits from recess from last year to this year. Um, we had 209 last year. We've got 99 this year. We have what's called office visits are termed as major or minor. So major ones are big incidents like hitting, pushing, punching, things of that nature. Minor ones are more like drama that we maybe need to solve and resolve. Um, last year we had 127 major. This year we're at 59. And last year we had 82 minor, and this year we're at 41. Mm -hmm. So seeing some really good progress and growth at the elementary school. Um, on May 4th, our PTO hosted our Strides for Students events. Because the weather was a little iffy, they moved it inside. We weren't sure what the turnout was going to be, but it was an amazing turnout still. And for the second year in a row, we exceeded our goal. So the goal was to raise $25,000 when all was said and done, including expenses for things for hairspray and all of those kind of things, we netted over $32,000. So we'll be working with PTO to identify how we're going to spend that. We're looking at bringing in some residencies to support further opportunities for kids in the area of art, music, and STEAM. Um, last Thursday, we had our field day event. Uh, it was a major success, and the weather cooperated to allow us to be outside. Huge thank you to Coach Klein and Coach Julie for their planning time and energy in teeing up this event, and the rest of our specialist team, Kristen DeMars, Hannah Rossold, and Leah Christensen, in helping support that event. And then this Thursday will be our final family engagement night of the year in coordination with our PTO. Um, it will be from four to six. It's called a celebration of learning and will serve as a culminating event for students to showcase their growth over the course of the year with their families. So all of their work will be out in classrooms for families to go in and see. In addition, we're bringing in the Works Museum who will have 10 hands-on stations where kids can experience science, technology, engineering, and math in action to tie into our theme that we had from I Love to Read month in February. Any questions? All good, work. All good things. Wow.
Do we, do we publish that data anywhere? Yeah, yeah good comment. We're going to. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 We need like to be proud of that. Of yeah. 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 On our new website. Where yeah. It's just like, like, Some amazing yeah. growth. Yeah. Well, and That's it's smart. exciting to see where it will put us next year, because yeah. then if yeah. they're going into second grade that high, yeah. how far right. can second grade carry them? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Nice work. Pat Thank yourself you. on the back, on all the staff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will. I will. Not all of them. It's that hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I am actually really excited to share with you that I'm going to start with our child care. And um, as you probably know, that our child care is a NACI, which is, stands for the National Association for the Education of Young Children. And we have just achieved a new five-year term of accreditation um, with a 97.32 pass rate. So accreditation uh, demonstrates our commitment to um, quality and continuous quality improvements by ensuring that our environment policies and practices are continually aligned with the NACI's early learning standards and recommended practices. So remember all that exciting stuff in our handbook, all those fun <laughs> updates? Mm -hmm. This is why we have all those really, really exciting and enlightening updates in our handbook. Um, so we are really excited. This is our third renewal. So um, we are just going to keep going on with those um, NACI accreditation, um, just showing that continuous um, program improvement um, because it is bringing us a lot of nice grant dollars. Um, and just uh, to give you an idea, our program um, this summer, we do have 157 students enrolled with 40 staff. Um, this year we're ending with 137 students and next year we have 129. So we'll keep enrolling and we are looking at ways that we can um, work to find um, how can we keep increasing that enrollment. Um, one thing I talked about with our um, handbook was how we are working to um, align and make sure that we're working together with our early childhood program. Um, so that's just something um, that we are continuing to work on as well. With our early childhood program, our ECFE um, did end um, programming on May 9th, and we're ending with a really fun event um, this Wednesday um, with our kickoff to summer, so 6, 30, or 6 to 7.30 at the CLC, so please come and join us. Our preschool also ends this Friday, um, and we are ending. We have 99 kids enrolled, and 64 of those are headed off to kindergarten. Um, next year, we are um, starting with 91 kids, and we will also have a full day um, preschool class for the first time. Um, this summer, we have a variety of summer ECFE programs, and we have 54 children enrolled. Um, tomorrow night, we have our last community ad advisory meeting. Um, and on Friday, I will be sending off to, uh, to our graphic designer our fall community ad. So already ending summer and thinking about fall. Um, and that will open on August 5th. So yeah, summer's over already. <laughs> Don't wish it away. <laughs> Any questions? I would just add, I think Amy sold herself a little bit short in her staff, particularly M Michelle Hess in that NACI award, uh, not award, but rating. I think you were at 97, 98%. 97.32. 97. Uh, 97 <laughs> thank you. But when I talked to her on the phone today, I mean, she really shouted the praises of, of Michelle yes. Hess and the work that she did. And if you remember, Amy was in that role previously becoming the director. So it was kind of like that proud parent moment of seeing someone who's filling your shoes taking the program to another level even more. Uh, and obviously Amy's a great mentor too, but I think uh, it goes to credit to Amy and, and Michelle for that work. And I, again, it, that number is unheard of, I think, in terms of ratings. It's usually like in the 80s, I think, was kind of the yep. number you gave. And it, uh, Programs can get accredited at like a 75%, um, and most are hitting about the 80. 97 is a pretty rare number for a program to get, so that's really good. And that is actually all on Michelle. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Something else to trumpet. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. So, yeah. Sure Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Szymanski. Did they win? Yes. Yeah. They did. Score? 
Seven two. Thank you. Nice. nice. So now I, there goes my whole update as far as <laughs> the order. So I'll start with that. Um, Royal softball wins tonight to uh, start section place seven to two over Howard Lake. Um, they are supposed to play tomorrow, but we're not planning on it. So we're going to try to get it in tomorrow. If we don't, we'll play Wednesday. After Wednesday, things start to stack up and get really interesting. So yeah. let's just hope we get it in tomorrow or Wednesday, or maybe we can miss school or something and play during <laughs> the day or something like Friday. that. Yeah. Um, baseball has, uh, they start their seating tomorrow, so we'll know more tomorrow for baseball. Track Wednesday is day one of sections in Rockford and boys and girls golf. Uh, next Thursday, May 30th, up at Pebble Creek. So we're right in the heart of section time. Um, I can't think. Tomorrow, I think we've got ninth grade baseball, but other than that, all lower level stuff is is completed. So it's just the varsities. It's tournament time. So that's always very very exciting and very very bittersweet. So, um, so yep, yeah, that's that. Uh, just a quick update on our coaching hires. Uh, right now, currently, we have a seventh grade football position open and no applicants. We've got a seventh grade volleyball position and no applicants. Two soccer positions, lower uh, assistant and middle school, or slash C, um, both open without applicants. Uh, officially right now, boys soccer assistant is still open, but that's in the works. And boys and girls golf, the JV position is open and no applicants, but some things are in the works. The big one, the head coaching position, girls basketball, we will be interviewing on Thursday. So hopefully relatively soon after that, we'll make an offer and then get uh, get after it this summer. So, Just curious, how many applicants do you have for that position? For the basketball? Mm -hmm. We had a total of nine. Okay. Wow. We would have had so a lot cool. more, um, you know, I, I guess all well, depending on circumstances and stuff. The teaching opening part of it really hurt us in a sense that it it um, you know we have a teaching opening you can hold you can have a, a coaching head coaching position assigned with that or part of that or make it more attractive. Um, non teacher coaches work, but it's it has to work. You know the circumstances have to work for both the individual looking and and both the districts. So it's it's not an easy fit, but sometimes it works out and sometimes it works out really well. So. What happens to the other positions where there are no applicants? Um, right now, I've got Heather coaching seventh grade football. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were going to talk about it tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Um, I keep telling Deb and Denise in the office that they're going to handle soccer, but they ignore me. So yeah. but we'll figure it out. I love this. I plan. So. Heather is a fantastic coach. She is a Look great at her face. cheerleader. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Schuler. All right, just a few items tonight. Um, the we had our first safe, safe schools meeting on Friday, um, and it was great again to get our county f uh, folks back together. Uh, bus company was there, our food shelf folks, um, um, board members, Kay, Joe, and Hunter also came, but uh, just a really good discussion and a sharing of resources is why we do that. The county plays a really important role in, in a lot of what we do in, in schools. So to get them on the same page was, was great. Um, I think we had over 20 some folks attend. Uh, we invite about 35 people, so we're going to grow. Hopefully, grow that next year. But um, Lisa Brennan, who is um, a part of the um, uh, Carver County um, co-located uh, therapist group, she's fantastic and is really helping to get the county folks more engaged in this meeting. Which we had, we had a great conversation. I don't know if you guys had anything else to share on that, but um, it was good. Um, we're also working on our reunifying uh, reunification exercise on June 3rd, and um, Joe has been working um, pretty pretty hard on getting that all pulled together again this year, um, meeting with subgroups, and then we have our, our whole group team meeting tomorrow at 9 um, as we dial that in and get that ready to uh, be undertaken at about 8.30 on the 3rd that morning. So uh, getting those details worked out. Um, We'll report more on that next month as well after we complete it. 
Um, the director of building and grounds position um, hiring is um, uh, looking at uh, June 5th. There's our interview day there, and we have um, about six, seven candidates that have applied currently and are inquiring of, um, just on a number of things. But um, the ones that we do have, I'm really pleasantly surprised. We have some really good applicants with great experience in similar roles and in schools, but also um, in, in uh, other areas as well. So um, I think we'll have a really good pool of candidates when it comes to interviews on the on the fifth. And we have about 11 um, of our staff who are going to be on that committee. So we'll have a good representation of um, staff on that group. And then lastly, you, you saw probably the legislature ended on, on Sunday uh, with a bang. Uh, again, not a budget year in terms of school um, financing, but um, we we did, we were heard in terms of that REDAC funding. And as Joe talked about earlier, again, just that ongoing training that we've talked a lot about here <laughs> and, and what we need support in, um, they did, um, put uh, about $40 per student onto the formula um, for, for this current year, so they're kind of readjusting. And then the following year, it's right around $36 um, per student. So for us, it's about thirty eight, or excuse me, $58,000 um, this year, and then about $52,000 next year that we can use for staff training um, and, and basically read act work that we're doing. So I think that was the biggest plea from districts across the state is, this is a huge initiative, which I've obviously shared with you, um, and the funding piece, our professional development budgets just can't withstand that. And obviously staff need to be paid for their work, so it's, um, it's really important. So this will help, it won't obviously cure everything, but this was a nice step to support that work. Um, and yeah, that's all I have. Any questions? No. As far as the READ Act, the one thing that was kind of disappointing personally was there was no funding in arrears so we spent right. you know we we were ahead of the game mm -hmm. there was talk initially that those who have already gone through the training would get funding back but that didn't pass mm -hmm. in the legislative branches so one other piece that they did add to some stipulations we're trying to get some a little more dialed in on it, but they are looking at allowing districts to use one um, student contact day as a PD day. So, um, you know, we've talked about that a little bit, you know, at, at the admin, admin level, and we've shared a little bit here too about we know staff needs more time to complete this training. So that was one caveat too that we're getting, Joe and I are getting more details on as far as what that actually looks like and who does that impact. Um, you know, could we use a day, probably more at the elementary to say we're gonna take up student day and make that into a PD day. Um, so we're looking at some potential, if that is true in the legislation, is it, saying it is, but we just need the finer details on what that looks like. So that's, Somewhat encouraging too, so. And just to note, the reunification is now the opposite. So starting at the elementary school and moving students to the middle school, mm -hmm. or high, high school. school. Yep, exactly. And we don't have to communicate that out. No students are going to be involved. It's going to be. Uh, what we do, we do, out. just because there might be some law enforcement, um, ambulances, that type of yep. thing on site. So we have communicated that out. We'll probably do that again. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Mr. Schuler? All right, moving on to board member reports. Anybody have anything? Um, District Advisory Committee will be meeting in person uh, in November. Um, we decided we'd start out the year with an in person and then continue with just virtual the remainder. That's the only one I know of so far. We haven't really had anything on marketing and communication come up. Anybody else? Southwest for meeting tomorrow. Okay. It's always the day after. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's always on a Tuesday, but yeah. we moved it a week, so. Oh, yeah. It would, our meeting would technically be next week. It would, yes. Um, I got a bunch of updates, but uh, does anybody else have anything? <laughs> giving everyone the chance before Hunter talks. Uh, now, now I'm, I'm on the clock. clock. I'm on the clock. I'll go fast. Uh, finance, we're probably going to be meeting in the next month or two, reviewing final budget. Uh, Bach, we're still meeting every other week. Um, maybe we can push that out as the projects wind down. 
again, want to thank uh, Mr. Dressel for attending all the calls and his wealth of knowledge, so he'll definitely be missed. Um, from a uh, Minnesota School Board Association side, uh, we had the annual meeting last two weeks ago, I think it was. It was down in St. Peter. Um, it was kind of a good time to kind of see their spaces, again, meet with the other directors and then their, their support staff. Um, one of the items that was on there, we had a uh, student school board scholarship committee. So for those districts that have students on their school board, um, and I was on that committee, there were over 40 applications that we had to read through and come up and narrow it down to the top three. And each of those wow. students got, I uh, think it was a $3,000 scholarship, I mm, believe. Nice. Um, so keep tabs on social media. I think they've awarded one, um, more to come kind of keeping it secret until the MSBA folks show up in the board meeting themselves. Um, Darren stole my thunder on the READ Act. Um, <laughs> one thing that I thought was kind of interesting in, from that leadership meeting was within our region, our district, uh, there's still two schools that have not settled. Um, I think there are about 7 or 97% of the districts have settled with their teachers. Uh, the two that I know of that haven't are Shakopee and Waconia. Um, and wow. I know that I believe they're both in mediation, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But I know that I think they Wakonia haven't. Is. Mm -hmm. um, my sister. She's in Shakopee. And, and also, uh, they just came out today, I believe, an email from MSBA for their summer leadership seminar if you feel like you want to attend. It's August 5th. It's, uh, it's called Marriott North, so the old Northland off of uh, 169 and 694. Mm -hmm. So it's just a one day event. So more to come on that. That's all I have. Anybody else? Hearing none. I just have a question. Oh, yeah. Do we know how the plant sell one? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they sold out. Did they? Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. yep. He had, uh, I would say he sold 85% of everything just on Saturday. And, and then, then he, did then the he sold a little bit more the following week. And then he did have a fire sale at the end to yep. get rid of the last dozen or so. But all but one of the hanging baskets sold the, the, before, ahead of time. And he just had so many vegetables at the end. Yeah, that yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, tomatoes and peppers, they, he said they, he couldn't believe how many came up. I said, well, it's a greenhouse, so I guess it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for everybody that came to that and, and bought something there. And uh, great to see the new facility and the community had a chance to get in there and see it. Uh, That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, really good stuff. I saw a previous hmm. class got to visit. Uh, graduated. Yes, we had the class of 1984, so a 40-year reunion. Uh, Mr. Girton, Mr. Hennon, and myself uh, gave them a tour on Friday afternoon. Um, but again, a lot of fun. It, you know, they had never seen the middle school because that didn't exist when they went through school. <laughs> That's all old some of us are. Uh, and then uh, the uh, the high school though was fun because they really got a cool opportunity to see the new spaces. But also remember the old spaces. So they would say, Mr. So-and-so was in that room, Mr. So-and-so was in that room. Oh, remember when we did this. So um, again, we, we really will encourage that moving forward. I think that was a neat opportunity. And, and people came from North Carolina and Virginia oh, wow. and some are local too. But I mean, um, it was fun to see them just enjoy the, the new spaces and just go, wow, you know, this has really changed. And certainly our athletic facilities too, um, from what they remember, has, has changed significantly. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, if you don't, if you do know folks that are having their reunions, I think we would certainly be open to doing that again. It was fun. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Ms. Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. Burns. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned at 7.30 p.m. <laughs>